Roller coaster manufacturers come and then they go. So today, in honor of that, we're gonna look at defunct manufacturers and rank defunct manufacturers' last coasters. Before getting into the real meat of the list, there are a couple of coasters and manufacturers I should touch on, but only briefly because these coasters are very small. So number 13 is American Flyer, representing BA Schiff Associates. This coaster originally opened in 2010 in South Carolina, but it doesn't operate there anymore. It was last seen, at least according to RCDB, in 2021 at a Dominican Republic fair circuit. Number 12 is Speedy Coaster, representing LNT Systems. This coaster has been operating since 2012 at a family entertainment center in the United Arab Emirates. Number 11 is Magic Mountain, representing SDC. This coaster currently operates in Italy. Number 9 is Comet Jr., located at Granby Zoo in Canada. This roller coaster is the representative for a national amusement devices company and it originally opened in 1973 and it has since been removed. Number 9 is New Wild Mouse Coaster, Hopkins Final Creation. This coaster operated at Misaki Park in Japan from 1996 to 2020. Thank you for making it this far. Number 8 is Coaster Express, located at Parque Warner Madrid, built by RCCA. Coaster Express is one of those rides that's very big, but a lot of people have taken a lot of issue with the coaster because of its boring layout and overall rough experience. The coaster is 4,574 feet long, has a speed of 59 miles an hour, and is 120 feet tall, so it's not exactly a small creation, so when you pair that with a rough ride experience, it can be very uncomfortable. From what I've heard, they did some retracking on this a few years ago, but the layout still isn't good enough to make this a good coaster and an otherwise very solid park in Parque Warner Madrid. Mission Z47, located at Tivoli Park in Brazil, is the last coaster that Penfari ever built, and would it surprise you if I told you that this is a Zyklon? Yes, the model that Penfari became famous for was their final coaster. It seems fitting. Penfari Zyklons are an interesting model. No one really considers them top tier coasters, but they can be found anywhere, especially at traveling fairs and small parks. They're very easy to take down and put back up, which for some people seems a little bit sketchy, and to a certain extent I agree with you. However, these coasters have still become very popular for that reason. Number 6 is brought to us by the Din Corporation. It's Mean Streak, which formerly operated at Cedar Point. Well, if Coaster Express was an infamous coaster, then I think Mean Streak is an even more infamous one. It actually has a lot of similarities to Coaster Express, mainly that it was big, terrible, and obnoxious. It was 5,427 feet long, with a height of 161 feet and a speed of 65 miles an hour. However, it was pretty rare to find someone that enjoyed this coaster, especially at the end of its life. The criticisms for Mean Streak were basically twofold. Number one, it was not a smooth ride. And number two, the layout didn't really have much to offer besides drops and bank turns repeat. Those factors, mixed with a declining ridership, led Cedar Point to RMC it into Steel Vengeance for the 2018 season, which I think we are all very thankful for. Steel Vengeance looks like one of the best coasters in the world, and some people put it at their number one spot. CCI's last coaster takes the fifth spot, New Mexico Rattler located at Cliffs Amusement Park. In fact, CCI went bankrupt while this coaster was being built. Yeah, not the best situation. The park actually had to finish construction themselves and give them some credit because they got it done in time for it to open late in the 2002 season. This isn't the biggest of coasters, it's only 80 feet tall with 2,750 feet of track. I do worry about this coaster's roughness a bit, but the layout itself actually looks pretty solid and it looks like an enjoyable ride from that department with some of the elements CCI put in there. This is no doubt the marquee attraction at Cliff's Amusement Park, so I just hope that the park has kept it running well enough in the last 21 years where it's still an enjoyable coaster to this day. Number 4 is Screamin' Eagle, located at Six Flags St. Louis. This was the final coaster that PTC built. PTC is a company that goes all the way back to the early 1900s. Technically speaking, PTC is still in business, but since they aren't building their own coasters anymore, I'm kinda counting them as defunct, but I guess that's up for debate. Leave a comment down below. Would you count PTC as defunct or still in operation? Anyways, Screaming Eagle was the last coaster they built. This coaster has been operating since 1976, with 3,872 feet of track, a height of 110 feet, and a speed of 62 miles an hour, and it goes out into the woods. This is a pretty large scale coaster, I have heard it has some roughness though. It's one of three wooden coasters at the park, and roughness aside, the layout and setting are very good. 
Number 3 is Titan at Six Flags over Texas, the last coaster Giovanola built. Now, to be fair, Giovanola only built 3 roller coasters, but they were all large scale. As you can see with Titan, this is a big coaster. To put some numbers to it, it's 5,312 feet long, 245 feet tall with a drop of 255 feet, and it goes 85 miles an hour. It's the biggest coaster at Six Flags over Texas. This coaster and its near clone Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain are often criticized for being B&M Hyper wannabes and not having enough airtime. At least Titan brings the intensity with two big helixes. And it's one of the smoother coasters you're going to find. Number two is Superman at Ultimo Escape, built by Morgan, located at Six Flags, Mexico. Like the previously mentioned Giovanola, DH Morgan Manufacturing didn't build very many roller coasters, but most of the ones they built are pretty big. Superman opened in 2004 and it has 5,577 feet of track, a height of 219 feet, and a speed of 74 miles an hour. And a lot of people think this is Morgan's best coaster, or at least in the conversation for it, and it looks like a great time. Steel Dragon 2000 is obviously Morgan's biggest coaster, as that is currently the longest coaster in the world located over in Japan. But Superman is no snub either. This thing is big, it has good airtime, it has good drops, and a good setting. That being said, I don't think it can top the top coaster on our list, and that is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain, built by Aerodynamics. Yes, some people hate this coaster, but on the other hand, some people put it at the top of their lists. Unfortunately, I can't speak from personal experience yet but there's no doubt that this was an ambitious coaster. Because I've talked about this coaster so many times already on this channel, I'll keep the coverage right here pretty brief, but basically X2 was the world's first fourth dimension roller coaster. Oftentimes, prototypes are pretty small, and they're still trying to get all the mechanics right. And while the mechanics were certainly not right for a long time with X2, formerly X, they went all out on this coaster. It's a hyper coaster. And unfortunately for Aerodynamics, this was a go big or go home type project, and in the end, it sent them home. They went bankrupt as Six Flags sued them, and they had all the issues with this coaster. Really a shame too, because the future was looking so bright for this company, only for it to all come crashing down. At least we got X2 as their final coaster, because that one is certainly noteworthy. One of the craziest projects ever in the theme park industry. And I think that's a pretty good place to end this video. When it comes to defunct coaster manufacturers, it is sad. In some cases, it might be better that they're no longer in business, and there's a good reason for that. Looking at you, RCCA. But in other cases, like aerodynamics, we ask questions like, what could they have become?